OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Um, my name is Diana Vera Alba, and I'm going to be presenting on open educational resources. This is a basics, so you're going to get a lot of information about a lot of different OER topics. Um, just to let you know, there is a series um, seven series. This is the first of seven series. So if there's something that you see here that you are really interested in, please be sure to ch check out the other presentations that are coming up in the next six weeks. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm an online instructor and trainer, and I've been doing this since 2012. I've taught in the modalities of distance education, hybrid, high flex, and online ESL courses. I'm currently an online faculty mentor, uh, an OER and CAPE coordinator and trainer at my district, and a Canvas course design trainer, as well as an accessibility trainer and an OTAN subject matter expert. Uh, my hobbies include gardening, photography, and I love animals. So you see three of my pets off to the right. So um, before we get started, I want to do a quick poll in chat. If you could please type number one, if you are not familiar with OERs, number two, if you are somewhat familiar with OERs, and number three, if you are very familiar with OERs. So just a quick check-in, and this will help me help you throughout the presentation. Okay, thank you. So we have quite a bit of twos. That's great. Well, you're in the right session, um, so that this will just help me pace this presentation and um, be able to answer your questions. So thank you for voting in chat. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's our agenda for today. Um, we're going to start off with what are open educational resources. So we're going to look at some of those key points there. Um, including the five R's of OERs. Then we're going to move into introduction to Creative Commons licenses. We're going to look at the types of Creative Commons licenses and how to use the licenses to identify OER. Um, we're going to then go into searching for OERs. So what are OER repositories? Where can you find free and open images? And where you can find free and open access books and resources? Then we'll end our day with OER tools. I'm going to show you this really cool tool, the Creative Commons License Chooser. And um, I have lots of information on the Open Attribution Builder. So I've written both articles and created videos on the last one. So we may not have time to go over it, but I have lots of resources for you um, for that. So let's start off with a definition of what open educational resources are. And this is from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. So I'm just going to read this to you. It says, OERs are open educational resources, which are free and openly licensed educational materials that can be used for teaching, learning, research, and other purposes. So I wanted to point out this openly licensed phrase here. So whenever you're, um, you're, you're um, looking at OERs, open means it's free to use. So it may have a um, 
license attached to it, which we're going to see, uh, it will have a license attached to it, which we, we will see how to define what the author wants you to use. But I want you to keep that in mind, that openly licensed. So that means that you are free to use based on the license. And it's really nice because the licenses have these great um, emojis attached to them and it, they are easy to identify. Um, the definition goes on as open education is the simple and powerful idea that the world's knowledge is a public good and that technology in general and the web in particular provide an extraordinary opportunity for everyone to share, use, and reuse. So those last three, share, use, and reuse, are my favorite things about open educational resources. Once you start using um, these types of resources and you connect with communities of others using these resources, you'll see what a wonderful um, way this is to share knowledge, share what you have learned. Other people are so open to share with you. So um, just keep that in mind as well. It's a sharing community. So OERs are open educational resources that hold a specific license. And this license explains how the author gives permission on use and how the author wants to be given credit for their work. So what can be considered an OER? So basically any type of learning resource, learning material. So these could include post podcast and audio files, simulations, music files, lesson plans, online games, and apps, okay? They can be books, they can be worksheets, they can be any type of learning resource, as long as it holds a specific license. When we're talking about open educational resources, um, you have to think about these five permissions, okay? They're the five R's of OER, and they include revise, remix, reuse, redistribute, and retain. So in order for a resource to be a true OER, it has to contain all five of these. And we're going to look at these a little bit closer. So the first permission is revise. And this means you have the right to adapt, adjust, modify, or alter the content itself. So for example, if you find a wonderful worksheet that you want to use with your class, if it has the five permissions, you will be able to translate and rewrite the content into another language. So if you have this great worksheet in English and you happen to teach Spanish, you can modify that worksheet and you can translate that worksheet into Spanish without violating any copyright. The next uh, uh, R is remix, and this is the right to combine the original or revised content with other materials to create something new. This is actually one of my favorite things about OER is the ability to change or combine two different resources. So for example, you can take a unit from an openly licensed book and use sections of it mix it with your own materials and create a new unit. Or you can incorporate the audio content from one piece of music in, uh, and combine it with another piece of music to create a mashup. So lots of DJs like to do that. Um, so I, I mentioned that it's one of my favorite things and I'm actually in a grant project right now where a group of, um, there's a group of four of us that are revising a openly licensed book that um, is great and I've used in my reading class, but it is very Portland, Oregon specific. So what we are doing is we're going to 
to revise that book. We revised a couple chapters and just completely changed them. But the rest of the six chapters, we're just going to revise them to include San Diego and California specific resources. So um, it's really, really one of the best things that you can personalize these materials to fit the needs of your students. So the next permission is reuse, and this is the right to use the content in a, in a wide range of ways. So for example, you can use the resource with, in your class, in a study group, you can add the resource to a website, or you can include the resource in a video. So similar to what I'm doing right now, I did not create this picture, right? But I was able to reuse it because it's from the Noun Project and they have specific, uh, a specific license that allows me to share this image with you. And then the last one, I believe this is the last one, is redistribute. And this is the right to share copies of the original content, your revisions of that original content, or remixes with others. So for example, you can give a copy of the new content to a student, similarly to what I'm doing with my grant writing group, we're going to um, revise that book and we're going to share it with our students. I can also share it with other faculty. I could share it with anyone. I can add it to an OER repository and an OER library. You can also post a copy of the new content on your website. Okay, so you have the right to redistribute that original work that you created or a revised content of that work. And this is the last, last one, actually. And this is um, retain. And retain means you can make a, uh, you have the right to make, own, and control copies of that content. So for example, you can download a copy of that resource. You can duplicate the resource, or you can store the copy or manage the copy as you see fit as long as you're following the license. Any questions on the five R's before I continue? All right. We're gonna watch a short video. Um, this is only a minute, 39 seconds on what is OER. So let's go ahead and watch that. OER are open educational resources. These are uh, materials that have had an open license applied to them. So it could be a full textbook, a single unit, a worksheet, an interactive activity, anything that helps with teaching and learning. They can be printed out into physical copies for a very low cost and given to the students. It can also be an online resource as well. So open educational resources include not only openly licensed materials, but also resources that are in the public domain. This includes everything from photos from NASA to reports published by the government and uh, even things like bills and laws. OER are different than uh, traditional published resources because they come with the, the license to make adaptations to the material kind of baked into the resource um, from the beginning. Open educational resources can be considered as free plus permissions. And those permissions are five R's. You can reuse, remix, revise, retain and redistribute the content. Reuse means to take a resource and use it in any context you want. Remix means taking multiple resources and mixing them together and creating a new resource out of it. Revise means to make a copy of the resource and actually change it and adapt it to the local context. Retain means to keep and control a copy of the resource forever. And finally, redistribute means the right to freely share whatever you've created. Okay, and we're going to watch one more video, <clears throat> and this is about Creative Commons licenses because we're going to take a deep dive into what these are. Um, so we'll start with this two-minute video. 
This video will introduce you to Creative Commons licenses, which make copyright easier to understand. Let's say you create something. This thing could be creative, like a picture of your cat, or scholarly, like an essay about cats. Because you are the creator of this picture or essay, copyright allows you to decide what people can do with your creation. When you are the copyright holder, People have to ask you for permission before putting your cat picture into a PowerPoint or adapting your cat essay into a movie. Getting permission can be time-consuming and complicated for both the creator and the user. This is where Creative Commons can help. Creative Commons exists to make permissions explicit and straightforward. Creative Commons licenses use icons and simple language so that creators can make their intentions clear and users can be certain that their use of a work is legal. These different licenses help people understand if and how they can use, share, or build on a work. This icon means that only non-commercial uses are permitted, so no one can profit from using your picture. This icon means that no one can make changes to the original work such as photoshopping a dog into your cat picture. This icon means that someone can change your work, but their version must be shared under the same license as yours. All Creative Commons licenses give credit to the original creator, preserving your reputation as a creative genius while the world engages with your work. Licenses can be attached to most things, including blog posts, images, artworks, journal articles, and more. To learn more about Creative Commons licenses, visit the Creative Commons website or check out some of the other videos in our series. This video will introduce... Okay. All right. So we're going to take a look at those six Creative Commons licenses. And like was mentioned in the video, um, each of the licenses have several icons in them. All of all of the um, licenses include the CC BY, and we're going to define that in just a moment. And the way that they appear here is from the least restrictive, which is CC BY, and then it goes on down the first column, and then up on the next column, the most restrictive is CC BY and C and D. Okay, so we're going to take a look at those. Um, licenses and what they mean and their restrictions. So the first license is CC BY, and this means Creative Commons by attribution. So others can copy, distribute, display, perform, and remix your work and give credit, give you credit as requested by you. And someone can use your resource commercially. So if you have a picture and someone is, you have licensed it as CC BY, someone can take your picture and, of course, give you credit in their book if they use it in their book. Um, and then they could sell their book. So it, it's not necessarily someone's going to take your picture and sell it and make duplicate copies, although that can happen. Typically, what happens is, um, authors are looking for images and um, to include in their book. So they'll go to um, sites like Pixabay or Unsplash um, to use in their resource. The next license is CC by SA. This stands for Creative Commons by Attribution, Share Alike. So this means others can copy distribute, display, perform, and remix your work and give you credit as requested by you. Someone can use your license commercially, but if they do use your materials with this license, they also have to use the same license on their revised materials and they have to share it with others under the same license. And that's just to uh, save the integrity of the original author's work, right? If they wanted it shared with the world and you're going to use part of their materials uh, and remix it with your materials, they want that same license on their original work and your revised work, okay? The next license is CC BY NC, and this means others can 
uh, I'm sorry, this stands for Creative Commons by attribution and non-commercial. Others can copy, distribute, display, perform, and remix your work and give you credit as requested by you. Others cannot use your work for commercial purposes. So if I'm going to be um, writing a book and I want to use your image in my book, I cannot sell my book. I have to um, use one of the Creative Commons licenses in my book if I want to be able to use your openly licensed image, okay? Now we're going to go to the next column and this next license is CC BY and CSA. And this stands for Creative Commons by Attribution and Non-Commercial and Share Alike. So others can copy, distribute, display, perform and remix your work and give you credit as requested by you. Others can distribute your work only under a license identical to the one you have chosen, okay, so that's the SA, share alike, and others cannot use your work for commercial purposes, okay? So that's the icon with the license, I mean, with the dollar sign and a slash through it. So others cannot use your work for commercial purposes. The next license is CC by ND, and this stands for Creative Commons by Attribution and No Derivative Works. So this means others must give you credit as requested by you, and others can only copy, distribute, display, or perform verbatim copies of your work, okay? So I'm gonna go back really quick. Notice that the rest of these, I kind of had a green light, a green arrow. They contain the five Rs. The next two do not contain the five R's. They only, they are um, limiting that you cannot change the work. So you can use somebody else's book or somebody else's material, but you cannot make any changes. That's the ND, no derivatives. Okay. And then the last um, license is the most restrictive, Creative Commons by attribution and non-commercial and no derivative works. So others must give you credit as requested by you. Others can only copy, distribute, display, or perform verbatim copies of your work. Okay, so they cannot make any changes to your work. They have to use it as is. And others cannot use your work for commercial purposes. Okay, so doesn't mean it's a bad thing, right? It just means that the author added these additional restrictions, okay? Any questions on the licenses? And you can unmute yourself if you have a question or you can add your question to the chat. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. I don't see any questions. So we're gonna look at where you can find OERs for adult education courses, right? Because all of us here are either in adult education or continuing education. There are many repositories, okay? And some of the top repositories are Merlot, Oasis, and OER Commons. So these repositories are these huge websites that house OERs, that house um, books and resources and lesson plans and videos, all kinds of resources. Um, and I added these three because they are the three largest. I put a little star next to OER Commons. And the reason for that is because OER Commons has an adult education filter. So it's easy to find materials that are that were created specifically for adult education or continuing education students. Many of the materials that you will see in Merlot will also be in OER Commons, but Merlot at the moment does not have that filter, okay? Um, there are also image repositories such as Pixabay, Unsplash, Open Clip Art, and Noun Project. 
So my go-to is Pixabay. Usually I can find what I need in this site as far as images. If not, I'll go to Unsplash or some of the other repositories that are out there. Um, and then for icons, I really, really like Noun Project. Okay, so that's why I put a star next to some of my favorites. Um, and then for open access books, um, there's BC Open Ed. And whenever you see something that says BC, it's British Columbia. So it's from Canada. And they are huge, huge OER writers, OER advocates. Um, so whenever you see something from BC Open Ed, it's probably a great resource that you can use in adult ed um, or continuing ed. Okay. OpenStax has a lot of K through 12 and general ed books, but if you also have GED programs in your um, at your site, um, this might be a great resource for that program. And then Pressbooks directory of OER collections has beautiful books, lots of um, books in the humanities, um, lots of books in art and history and things like that. They have other topics as well, but um, they, they do have a lot of history and humanities types of books. Okay. So let's take a look at OER Commons, and I'll show you how to use these giant, giant resources or repositories. Um, so when you arrive at the website, you'll um, see um, some tabs at the top, and this is very common with lots of these repositories. They'll have these drop down tabs where you can take a look at other um, ways of finding things. OK, one of the things that I tell my faculty is if you have the opportunity to create an account with some of these repositories, then I highly recommend it. It's free. And the reason why I recommend it is as you're looking for resources, if you create an account, you can add that resource to your account without having to download it to your computer or if you're doing um, I do this often, I'll do a quick search and then um, I'll I'll take a deeper dive and look at my resources later on. So instead of um, downloading them, I can save it in the OER Commons cloud under my account. Okay, and then later on, if I want to use it, if I want to add it to my Canvas account, which um, at my district, we use Canvas as the as our MLS. Um, I can um, download it later on, but um, if you have that option, I recommend that you register. It's free to register and the information that they request is very minimal. OK, um, so you'll see some quick search uh, bars here um, where you can begin to search. Um, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Um, some of these giant repositories also have um, a way to create for you to create your own OER and lots of helpful videos on how to get started with that. Okay. You can also join groups. And if you're really into, if you really want to start using open educational resources, I highly recommend this because you will receive, instead of you having to search for everything, you can join groups in your discipline. So I've joined ESL groups where other ESL folks, because I teach ESL, where other ESL folks will share their resources with me. So instead of me having to do a lot of the legwork, people start sharing with you. So um, it's a great way, a great community, a great way to share within that community. Okay. And then at the bottom, it has a little bit more information about their library, some of their collections and the way that they um, categorize things here in OER Commons. Um, and then lots of more information. If you want information on PD, you can sign up with, with uh, other listservs where um, you can get information on PB, PD. And then if you want to become an OER Commons Pro, there's ways to do that. So there are some videos here, um, how-to videos on how you can do that, okay? So let's scroll back to the top. And again, this is the repository that I mentioned is one of my favorites. And that's because I 
they have an adult ed filter. So I'm going to do a quick search. I teach ESL reading, so I'm going to search for ESL reading. Um, I can add a subject if I want to or not. I'm going to leave that blank. This is the filter that I like to use. So they have preschool, K-12, community college, upper division college, graduate, career tech. So if you teach uh, CTE programs, there's also a filter for that. But here's the adult education program um, filter. Now, if you add the filter here, and let's say you don't find enough materials or very limited materials, you can always remove that filter once you um, add your search, and I'll show you how to do that. And then if you want to add one of the standards, you know, K-12 uses Common Core standards, but there are other standards listed here as well. I'm just going to leave that blank, and I'm going to choose Search. Okay, so in my search of ESL reading for um, with the filter of adult education, I received 68 results. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good number. And then um, if I want to further filter, there are all these other filters here to the left. So let's say I did not receive, I only received two or something like that. I could remove the adult ed filter by high, um, hovering my mouse over and just choosing that X. And now I have 267 uh, resources to look at. Okay, so I'm gonna add my filter back on to go to those original 68. You can filter by material type. So if I'm only looking for games or I'm only looking for modules, I can do that. Or if I'm only looking for textbooks, I can add that filter there. You can also filter for license types. So we just went over the Creative Commons licenses, but if I want a specific type of license with unrestricted use, so if I want the least restrictive Creative uh, Commons CC BY, I can add that filter because I know with this license, it's the least restrictive. I can change these resources. I can revise them, remix them, reuse them. Um, so I don't have to worry about searching for that license within each of those materials. I can filter that here. And now I have 27, which I like. It's doable. I can quickly at a glance go through these um, materials. Um, and there are other, um, other filters. You can add content source. There's primary use, whether it's for students, teachers, or parents. Uh, the type of media format, if I want to um, filter that in as well. Educational use, uh, language, and I can search by providers. So once you get familiar with searching for OERs, you might find that there are certain authors that you like. For example, Reagan McNeil, she adds, or he adds a lot of resources here. I've used lots of materials from that person. So if I want to see what other uh, resources Reagan has added, then I could just add Reagan's name here. Okay. Um, so I'm down to 27 because I added that additional Creative Commons CC BY filter. Uh, for the license. So at a glance, I could see the material here, just a picture of it, the license, a quick description. The other thing I look for is when this resource was added. Um, I want something that's fairly new if I'm doing a quick search. Um, I've already done this for a while. So um, that's the type of thing that I look for is um, newer materials. Does it mean that older materials are not still useful? It's just um, something else that I like to look at. Um, so at a glance, I could just scroll through this. And if there's something that catches my eye that I really want to take a look at, um, I can, um, I can uh, click on the title. I can also start check, uh, checking these resources um, to add them to my account. Once I'm logged into my account, I can do that there. 
So let's take a look at this BC Reads. I like things from British Columbia. They do a lot of great things. Um, so once I choose the resource, it has um, a longer description. So I'm still not in the resource. If I want to view the resource, I can go directly here. Um, the other thing that OER Commons adds are these icons here to the left where I can share it. Um, if I use Google Classroom, I can download it to my Google Classroom. And if there's something wrong with the resource, I can also flag it here. Okay, so there's a description. Um, now I think I want to look at this resource. I'm going to go view resource. <clears throat> and I see that it's a reader. Um, it's reader level two, so I'm thinking there's probably other readers um, at other levels. There's a description here. I have the option to download the book or read the book online. So I'm going to choose read the book online. And many of the resources here were created on a platform called um, Pressbooks. So if you see this, you'll see a lot of um, resources with this format, especially if they're books. So if you see this red bar with the black and gray here in the middle and then some description here, don't be alarmed like this is not the whole entire book. To view the book, you're going to choose the contents here to the left. So here's the table of contents for this book. You see a plus sign here. You can open that and now I can see the different chapters. Okay. Now, this is when I'm reading it online. When I download it, I'm either it's either going to download as a PDF. Sometimes you will get a Google download, but typically it will download as a PDF. OK, and then you can take a look at it like you would a PDF document. It would just be really long because it's a book. So um, I have access to you see these are live links. I have access to the chapters. So if I want to go to chapter five and just take a look, um, I see a video or some kind of audio, actually an audio at the top. Okay. And then um, here is that unit or that chapter in the book. Okay. All right. So let's go back. So that is OER Commons. Any questions about OER Commons? Okay. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> okay. And Merlot is very, very similar, um, has great resources. Um, there's a search bar here. I can search for ESL reading. Um, and these come out as cards, similar to what we saw in my first search in OER Commons. Um, off to the left, I have these additional filters that I can add to um, bring this down a little bit. There's 194 resources just in the Merlot collection. So one of the things that Merlot does is they go outside. So notice that this is 194 um, resources in the Merlot collection. Merlot will also resource your topic, ESL reading, um, with other libraries. So that's the next tab here. And if I choose the next tab, it'll show me 10 results, okay, for, again, my topic of ESL reading, and then there's a web tab where they will search the web. Okay, and that has 100 resources. Um, so a little bit more extensive in Merlot uh, than in OER Commons because they do search outside of their own repository. Okay, so you can have lots of fun looking for resources in Merlot. Um, but again, so that you don't get lost, you want to make sure that you add some filters here because likely you will get hundreds and hundreds of resources. So the more filters you add, you can get closer to what it is that you're looking for. Now, since Merlot doesn't have an adult ed 
uh, filter, what I for reading, what I do, depending on the level of student of my students, I'll either search for high school or college general ed and kind of do my own filtering depending on what comes up. Um, but there's still a way for you to get around that. Um, it's just not specific to adult education or continuing education, but I have made that request several times now. So hopefully they will um, get requests from others as well and they'll add that filter here for us um, soon. All right, so we went over Merlot and OER Commons. Um, we're, I'll look really quick at Pixabay. So hopefully you're familiar with some of these um, image repositories. Um, so Again, I'm going to use just the same um, uh, ESL reading topic. Now, these are images. So um, I did that on purpose because I knew this was going to pop up. So Pixabay is a free site where it's stated free. So here it says we couldn't find any matches for ESL reading. However, there are these other matches that you can pay for, okay? So if you see 20% off with Pixabay, blah, 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 coupon, um, that means that you can use these images, but you're going to have to pay for them, okay? So I'm not, I'm going to remove ESL and I'm just going to say reading. And now I'm going to find some of those free resources. So these are the paid resources appear because here's my coupon code, but um, they did find lots of free open uh, images for me to use. Okay, so if I'm scrolling through here and I see an image that I like, um, so let's say I want this image with the book and the glasses, I choose the image and I have some options here off to this right okay so it gives me the author's name and this author has posted 587 images in pixabay um, and that's great i could follow this person i can send this person coffee or a coupon for coffee for letting us use the resource you don't have to do that but you can um, all of the pixabay resources are under this license which which says free to use under the content license, no attribution required, okay? However, it's nice to attribute the work back for two reasons, right? You want to give the author credit, even though he's saying you don't have to give me credit, I always like to do that, right? I don't wanna claim something, me personally, I don't wanna claim something that's not mine. Um, but also, um, it's so that if I use this image and I really liked it, um, if I add the attribution, I'll know exactly where to get that image again. I won't have to search again. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I download the image, I have some options here on the size. I'm going to go with the smallest size. Once I choose download, it's going to automatically give me the attribution. So all I have to do is copy this attribution. I downloaded the picture. I can add the picture to my slide or wherever I'm going to add that picture and then paste their attribution here. So if you notice, that's what I did here. I did not have to create this link. It's already been created for me. Okay. So that's a really nice thing about these repositories. Unsplash has the same thing. They have these pre-made attributions. And then later on, if I want to re reuse this particular um, image, all I have to do if, if I'm like, oh gosh, where did I get that? Where, you know, which site did I get that? It's already here for me. Okay. For if I want to share this with somebody else, somebody likes this picture, I'll share the picture with the attribution. Okay. All right, any questions on repositories? So I'm gonna continue. There, all of these repositories here are linked out, um, but I wanna make sure that we have time for 
um, other parts of this presentation, um, but all of these are linked out and I'll give you a copy of the slides at the end of the presentation. All right. Um, so where can I find resources? So besides the repositories that I had in the previous slides, um, most U.S. colleges and universities have an OER section on their website. It's really, really big with colleges to provide open educational resources for their students because of the high cost of education. Um, most colleges and universities really, really promote um, open educational resources for their faculty to use and for their students. So you'll see um, that's a great resource if you want to go to any of your local colleges and see what they have on their website and do a search for OERs. Um, you can also do a Google advanced search. You just have to be very specific for best results. So meaning if you want um, a particular license to be on that resource, you want to um, be specific about that. Uh, YouTube has lots of uh, free videos, right, to use, but many um, YouTubers are now adding the Creative Commons license to their videos as well in their description. Khan Academy is also a great resource. And TED Ed. TED Ed you can use their resources. They do have the most restrictive license on their resource, so you can't revise their videos, but I think the TED Ed videos for the most part are excellent as is. So I do use TED Ed videos with my um, students in my courses. Um, so now we're going to go into attribution. Um, so I showed you on the Pixabay site how they have these pre-made attributions for us, but there are these um, two great sites that uh, that are my go-tos where you can create your own attribution for your own work, okay? So attributions are an important part of OER in defining how you can legally borrow someone else's work or identify the permission level or licensing you give others to use for your own work. Equally important is the ability to understand the various levels of permissions identified by the author. Okay, so that's where we went over those Creative Commons licenses. Whether it be course materials, modules, open textbooks, openly licensed videos, software tools, whole courses, or any other materials that are deemed to support access to learning. Okay, um, so why and how to attribute. So we talked about those um, six Creative Commons licenses. So now that you can identify those licenses and their permitted use, we can look at how to correctly add attribution to your work and the work of others. So we've looked at several OER sites, right? We looked at Merlot, we looked at um, Creative Commons, I mean, uh, OER Commons, that house these ready-made materials, textbooks, and images. So once you find OER materials that you would like to use, there is a final important step to correctly attribute the work you will use from others, okay? Um, license your own original work or a combination of both based on the Creative Commons licenses. So remember, you can use other people's works in your courses in your um, in your Canvas course, in your um, Google site. You can you can use them, but you want to make sure that you attribute the work, right? That's that's why they are licensed, right? And also so that when you're sharing out, if if it's on a website that is open and other instructors can look at your site, you want to be able to um, also let them know what they can do with the work um, by adding the attribution, by adding the license to the work, to the work that you borrowed or your own work. So there's an easy open resource that contains a fillable attribution template from the Washington State Board of Community and Technical Colleges called the Open Attribution Builder. And this allows educators to build an attribution to accurately give credit to others or your own work. Okay, so we're going to take a look at that one. Um, 
So some open resources provide a ready-made attribution like we saw at Pixabay and Unsplash has this as well. These attributions typically appear near the image or when you're downloading the resource. Okay, so for resources that do not provide that ready-made resource or attribution, you can use the attribution builder or you can use the Creative Commons license chooser. <laughs> Excuse me. So the open attribution builder would be for uh, works that are not your own. Excuse me just a moment. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So the open attribution builder, you can use for your own resources and for somebody else's resources. The Creative Commons license chooser, you can use that <clears throat> resource for your own work. So if you are considering licensing your own work, but you're not sure which license you want to use, this is a great resource. So we're going to take a look at it in just a moment. <clears throat> when you are attributing a resource, remember to use the acronym TASL. Okay, so for the Open Attribution Builder, in order for, use, for you to use that, you're going to need the title of the resource that you're going to attribute. You're going to need the author, who the author's name is, the source where you found the resource, and the license that appears on that resource. So again, this is for somebody else's work. Also for your own work, if you already know which license you want to use. If you don't know yet which license you want to use, we're going to use a Creative Commons license chooser. Okay, so let's take a look at that one. <clears throat> and this was created by Creative Commons. Okay, they're a great resource. They're the ones that also created the Creative Commons licenses that I went over. Um, so it's very simple. Some of these are yes and no questions like what we're going to practice here. So you're going to follow the steps to select the appropriate license for your work. This site does not store any information. Okay, so let's go through these. So the first one says, do you know which license you need? If you know which license you need, you don't need the chooser. If you choose yes, it's just going to tell you, okay, go to the Creative Commons licenses, choose one, and then add that icon to your resource, okay? But we're going to assume it's no. You're not sure which license you want to add to your ori original work. So you're going to say no and click next. Um, the next question, do you want attribution for your work. So do you want others to give you credit? If you say yes, it's going to start building off to the right. It's going to start building your license. Okay. If you say no, you don't mind if uh, or you don't need to get credit for your original work. If you say no, it's going to give you that license, which is CCO. So this is public domain. This license has no restrictions, meaning um, if you add this to your work, no one has to give you credit back. You are also giving up your copyright to the work, okay? If you choose to add this license to your work, okay? Now, I didn't mention it before. There's going to be another session where we're going to get, take a deeper dive into copyright. But if you choose one of the Creative Commons licenses, you are not giving up your copyright. Your original work, your original materials are still, you still hold the copyright to that, okay, automatically. Um, so you also have that protection with the Creative Commons licenses. Okay, so let's just say yes, I want to receive um, credit for my original materials. So I'm going to choose next. 
And then do you want to allow others to use your work commercially? If you answer yes, nothing changes on the license over to the right. It's still CC BY. If you say no, I don't want others to use my work commercially. I don't want them to make a profit. Then it adds the icon for uh, non-commercial. Okay, so your license is building off to the right as you're answering these questions. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to choose next. Next question, do you want to allow others to remix, adapt, or build upon your work? Okay, yes, I, I, I would like to give others permission to change my, uh, revise their work based on their students' needs. So I'm going to choose yes, it stays the same. If I choose no, it adds the ND, the non-derivatives, okay? So now I'm at the most restrictive license here where I'm saying you cannot make a profit and you cannot change my work, okay? And you can stop there if you want, or if you say yes, like I, I, I don't mind when people remix my work, I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to choose next. Uh, question number five, do you want to allow others to share adaptations of your work under any terms? Okay. If you say yes, others can share adaptations of my work under any terms. Okay. So license stays the same. Okay. You could share it with your friends, relatives, students, whoever, and um, it's still, it's still an OER. If you say no, it adds the share alike. Okay. So again, Others must use the same Creative Commons license if they adapt my work, okay? So um, you are adding that restriction where if this is the license you choose, you're giving them permission to, uh, to change it. But with that permission, you're also saying, I want my original license on your revised work, okay? I want to... Uh, save the credibility of my original work by saying adaptations must be shared under the same term. So I'm sharing with you, you have to share with others. Okay. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that and go next. Okay. And the last question, this is really important here. Um, you want to confirm that your creative license is appropriate by saying yes. I own or have authority to license this work. Either it's my own or the previous license gave me the authority to license the work this way, the re revised work. I have read and understand the terms of the license. You can look at the deed here of that license. And most importantly, I understand that Creative Commons licensing is not revocable. Okay. So once I add the license to my work, I haven't, you know, I have this blank, not a blank, but let's say I created a, a document, a worksheet. I have not added a license. Once I add the license and share it out, it's, revo it's not revocable. It's irrevocable. That means I cannot change my mind on the license. Okay. That's really important. It's really important because... I may change my mind, right? I may say, oops, uh, maybe I don't want uh, to add this thing here, right? I don't want the share sharing requirement on there. Okay, I can switch it now, but once I add the license and share it out, it's irrevocable. I cannot change it, okay? Questions about that. Okay, so here's my license. I can um, now add that to my work. And this is where I add where um, this builder not only gave me the yes and no and, you know, helped me choose the license, but it's also going to build the attribution so I can add it to a website. Okay, so I'm going to title my work. I'm just going to say reading image 
or actually let's say it's an image of a um, person reading a book. Oops. Okay, that's my title, the creator of the work. So as you notice, it's um, adding my attribution here. Um, so as I type, it's adding to my attribution, okay? If I don't have a website, so I don't have to add my website there, or I don't have it linked to any other website, this image, I'm just going to add it to Pixabay, let's say. Um, I created it this year, and then once I choose done, it kind of shakes here to remind you that your attribution is here. So I can copy this attribution. I can paste it under my picture. Okay, if I don't want the abbreviated version, if I want it spelled out, the license spelled out, I can change it um, by toggling to the right. So here I had CC by NC, it's linked out. So if somebody wants to see what this license means, they click it and it'll link it out, but you can also spell it out for them. And it's still linked attribution non-commercial 4.0 international. Okay, so it's still linked out. If they don't understand what that means, they can click on it and it'll take them to the Creative Commons site where it gives them a definition of what this license is. Okay, either way I can copy it as rich text. I can get the um, HTML code if I'm adding it to a website or Canvas or something like that and XMP is for met metadata, okay? Questions, do I have any questions about that? Okay, all right. Um, the other, oops, sorry, let me go back. The other attribution builder, um, I wrote an article and I have the step-by-steps on how to use the Washington Open Attribution Builder. I also created, and I'm going to go through these slides really quick, where I just show you the tassel, right? Remember that you're going to need tassel for that. Here's what the Open Washington Open Attribution Builder looks like. There's a direct link here. So similar to the Creative Commons Builder, you're going to need tassel, right? The title, the author, um, the URL, if you know where that's at, or if you if if it's on a site, you choose your license, and then just like the attribution builder, it starts building your attribution down here at the bottom. Gives you the opportunity to copy it. Um, so I'm not going to go over these steps, but um, they are here in the slides, and I would I also created a video on how to use it step by step. Okay, so um, that is there for you. Hi there. I'm Oops. the I'll continue. <laughs> oh, I do have time. Sorry. I thought I didn't have time. Maybe I will go over that. Um Let me go back a little bit here. Here we are. Okay. So the attribution builder again um you want there are some steps. So step one is um, for this purpose, I'm going to attribute um, a image I found. Okay, so you want to find a copyright free image. So you can go to Pixabay, you can go to Unsplash. And now they already have um, those attribution builders, but let's say you found it on another free site. Um, that does not provide the attribution. Um, you can use these steps, okay? So you want to take note of the site because remember on the Attribution Builder, it does ask you um, the website information. So you just want to copy that. Um, you want to look for the title of the image, okay? If you don't know the exact title, if it's not anywhere on here, you can give a description. Like here, I was looking for monarch butterflies. So I didn't see a name or of this image. So I would I could use that. If you're uncomfortable using a name or titling it yourself, you can just use the word image. 
So image of, you know, butterfly or, or just the word image, okay? You want to grab the author's name as well. So here's the author's name here to the right. And then the type of attribution license. Well, this says free to use uh, for commercial, per free for commercial use, okay? So you want to use the uh, license, Creative Commons license that is free for commercial use, okay? And then you go to the attribution builder. So let's let's do that. Let's do an example and let me go to the butterfly. So we have the same picture. Oops, monarch. Okay, here's a lovely picture of a monarch. Okay, so let me close that one. Let me go to the attribution builder and I'll show you step-by-step step how to do that. So I typically will have the image on one tab and then I'll have the attribution builder so I can just go back and forth, okay? So um, here are some potential um, image names that you can use. So I'm just going to choose butterfly. So I'm going to add the title as butterfly. Okay, and then I'm going to grab the URL where the picture is housed. So not from not the Pixabay uh, homepage, but where the picture, where you found the picture, because that will lead you directly to this picture instead of to the Pixabay site. So I'm going to add the URL here, and I'm also going to add the URL here. And then I'm going to, the author's name is Yolanda. So author, she only gave first name, so that's fine. And then I'm going to choose the license that's free to use under no attribution required. So that would be CCO here, okay? So you can use public domain where no attribution is required, or you can use CC BY. I still like to use CC BY. I feel really uncomfortable adding or uh, removing the copyright from somebody else's work. So I'm going to use the least restrictive Creative Commons license, which is CC BY. Okay, because remember, if I add public domain, I'm eliminating the uh, copyright from the original author and I don't want to make that decision for the author. So if it's not my work, if it's somebody else's work, I'm going to use CC BY if it's telling me it's the least restriction here. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully. So now it built the attribution. I can highlight it or just click on it and then copy it. So I'm going to add it down, oops, let me exit out of here, out of my, there we go. I'm gonna just paste it on here so you could see what it looks like. It looks like this, it pastes typically to the top of the slide. And then I can add that picture by downloading it. So I'm just going to give you an example. Once I choose download, it's, it gets downloaded to the bottom left-hand corner of my screen. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to add it here. So there you go. There's my image and there's the attribution that I added to the image. Okay. So we'll just leave it on there as an example. Okay. So we added the title. I added the URL on those two sections. I added an author's name, I chose the license, and then the attribution was created for me, okay? I copied the image and then I pasted the attribution under the image. All right. Um, here's the video that shows you those step-by-steps again. 
Um, so I have that there for you. Um, and before I go over the summary, I wanted to show you this resource, these resources here. Okay, so the Creative Commons license links are on slide 49. So all the resources are on slide 49. They're kind of peppered throughout the presentation as well, but I wanted to have um, all the resources on one page for you. Here's the link to Merlot, the link to Noun Project, which has lots of free icons. It's really cool site. They have actually over 3 million now icons in there. It's amazing. Um, OER Commons we looked at. Here's the link for that. I'm also linking an OER toolkit. Um, this was uh, a great resource that was shared with me. So now I'm sharing it with you. It has, I believe it's seven or eight pages full of resource links. Okay, so um, if you want to get started with OERs, there's lots and lots of resources on this toolkit. And I see I, there's a question. Does So the question is, does the attribution builder create a file that you are pasting into a document and that you can download for further use? Yes. Um, now it doesn't house the 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 um, it it doesn't save the attribution for you. It's only there at that moment. So you want to make sure that you copy it. So I just right clicked, copied, and pasted it to my slides, like I I showed you. Um, let me see. I'm not sure if there was a link to um, download. I'll check in just a moment to see if there's a download. I think it's just um, just gives you the ability to copy. Um, and then, um, so we'll go, we'll, we'll look back in just a moment. Um, here's the link to the Open Washington Attribution Builder, that second attribution that builder that I, um, that we looked at, the link to Pixabay, and here are um, the video links on how to use an attribution builder and what is an what is an OER. Um, anytime on my slides where you see the video, I also have the link here also. So there are there were two other videos that I showed you and they, all, they both have the links. Um, I did not include the third video on this slide because it didn't fit, <laughs> but they are um, directly on the slides, okay? So let's take a look at Pixabay. So you wanted to see if we can download. And I, yeah, Pixabay, I mean, um, the Washington Attribution Builder does not have the ability to download, but you just click in the box and then you right click with your mouse and you copy. So I copied it and then I pasted it, okay? the. Open chooser. Let's see. Let me just build one really quick. Um, oops. I chose the wrong thing here. Next. Yes. I'm going to say yes. Okay, so this one do also does not have a download, it has a copy. So um, yeah, neither one of them have a download. You would just copy, um, actually you don't have to highlight it with this one, you just choose copy and it's copied and then you paste it somewhere to your site or to your, um, to your, uh, slides or whatever it is. Now, if you click on the deed, so here's my license CC BY, the least restrictive. If you click on the deed, you might be able to download the deed. Um, yep, I don't see a download for this one either, but you can copy the, the site link. So the deed is just the explanation of what CC BY means. So if you want to add that also, you can add it to your resource. So um, you don't necessarily have to because it's already embedded here. 
So here's my license. If I click on it, it takes me to the deed. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to copy it twice. It's already embedded in your attribution. Okay. All right. So any other questions? Let me go back to the slides. All right, so there was the resource page. Let me show you really quick, because um, we do have a few minutes. I'll show you the OER toolkit. Um, when you click on it, you're going to be able to make your own copy so that you don't change the original copy. So click on Make a Copy, and it's going to open up in your Google Drive. And this original OER toolkit was created by Cheryl Casey, and um, she shared it with myself and others and allowed us to share it with you. So um, her license for this toolkit is CC BY. Um, there are lots of um, great links here, and they're categorized by uh, headings here. So if you want to learn more about OER, that's here. If you want to look at other OER training resources, there's links here for training. Um, OER training for library employees. So if there's a librarian, if you have a librarian at your site that wants to get other licenses, like I'm Creative Commons licenses licensed as a faculty member, but there's also Creative Commons license for librarians. So there's resources there. Here are some learning communities, information about textbook affordability, best practices for course materials, finding OERs, different uh, search tools, repositories and referatories like OER Commons, Liber, uh, LibreText is great, um, and other course uh, resources here. So lots and lots of resources, lots of things on Creative Commons. If you're interested in getting Creative Commons licensed uh, for librarians or faculty members, there are uh, links to do that here. There's information on copyright and fair use, advocacy for OERs, promoting, research, marketing. So it's a pretty extensive list, a toolkit that Cheryl created. Okay, one last thing I wanna share with you. Um, are there folks here that use, I know Tuha uses um, um, Canvas. Are there any of other folks in the room that use Canvas? I'm going to show you, oh, good. I'm going to show you a really cool resource that I created for our faculty and that I have now shared to the Canvas Commons. Um, doo -doo -doo, give it a second. There it is. Okay, so I created this open OER free resource ZTC Canvas site for our faculty. And I've shared this out now to the commons. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like. So basically, it's like Cheryl's toolkit in a website form. <laughs> um, so our homepage has some videos here. There's a video on how to use this site. There's links to the different modules in this site. Um, an OER video there. Um, this is for my faculty, so your yours won't have my office hours linked out here, okay? Um, but if you go to the modules section, I've categorized OER's resources. So there are some great free resources there. There's information on Creative Commons licenses. Um, there's information on attributions and uh, article that I've written uh, for OTAN on how to attribute your work and that video that I showed you earlier um, that's in my slide deck, deck as well. There's information about finding and using OERs. This is not in yours because this is just for my faculty. There's um, 
newsletters that I've sent out are housed there. OER repositories and the repositories I had them have them categorized by images and artwork. Um, the ones that are starter, the ones that I frequently use, um, there are lots of great um, repositories for images that include women and women of color in tech, um, diversity, stock photos, um, images of people of color. Um, so there's lots of these great um, new resources in here, large repositories that um, I use. And of course, I've starred the ones that I frequently use. And then um, I created a section for OER by discipline for our faculty. So we have child development resources, emeritus resources, lots of ESL resources by um, by ESL topics that we teach, um, healthcare careers, so some CTE resources here, resources for high school diploma and high school equivalency, and then some free resources, because these are not necessarily OERs, but they're free resources um, that you can use. So how do you get this? If you are using Canvas, let me leave student view really quick. Come on, really quick. Okay, so you're gonna go to the comments and in the comments, as soon as it comes up, you're gonna type my name, which is Diana Vera Alba. And all of the resources that I've uploaded to the Canvas Commons are here. So I've uploaded some lessons that I share with um, our faculty. But here is that OER for, it says OER for SDCCD, but it's open to all. Okay, so if you are interested in that, you can choose it, you can download it, you can use it at your site.